Hi everyone, Phil Travis here, um, EUH 1001, Summer Edition, uh, Week 5, like wow, and these classes go so fast, hopefully um, hopefully everyone's, you know, learning something, hopefully it's not moving too fast, uh, we have a lot of material we've been covering, but you know, things in the discussion forum and assignments have looked pretty good, so I've been pretty happy so far. Um, our last two weeks, Week 5 and Week 6, actually we deal with probably my two most interesting subjects in history, um, the period in the emergence of, the lead up to, the, the Second World War, the Second World War, and then the Cold War, which we'll be looking at next week. And of course, the Second World War and the Cold War are inherently linked. So two of my favorite subjects. So don't be overwhelmed. We're almost over. Um, push through these last couple of weeks and do really good um, and do a really good job finishing the course. Uh, when you look at World War II and you look at the Cold War, you can really get a feel for just how profoundly um, these periods of history have shaped the world today. Um, from understanding many of the conflicts in the Middle East to understanding uh, conflicts in Eastern Europe um, is just the beginning of understanding the transformative nature of this period, both the Second World War and the Cold War. So very, very interesting stuff that we're getting into. Uh, this week we'll be reading chapters 25 and 26 from your textbook, the Cole and Symes book. Um, we have a paper that's due this week. It's a short paper. Don't, you know, oh, we have a paper and there's only two weeks left. Um, it's a short paper. It's two and a half pages. It's supposed to be six to seven hundred words. Go into modules. It was in week four last week as well. Um, but go into modules. Look at the paper prompt. Watch my presentation on, uh, you know, paper writing on what I expect. Um, and then you'll see the submission box there. Follow the directions. The directions are very important. I want to see you doing some research on these papers. So um, follow the directions. Make sure the sources you're using are academic sources. Uh, your textbook counts as one. Uh, but I want to see well, three resor resources and make sure they're academic sources. Do not plagiarize, okay? Your own words. Um, you need to cite where you're getting things. I don't mean to be like, your own words pointing at you. Um, <laughs> um, just don't plagiarize, you know? If you're getting the information from somewhere, you need to cite it. Whether it's in quotes or not, uh, you need to cite it. Uh, do not take somebody else's words and put them off as your own. Uh, everybody knows that, so I don't have to do that. But please don't do it. Um, so that'll be due on Sunday. Uh, you have plenty of time to do that during the week. It's just two and a half pages, so it's not uh, it's not a huge assignment. It's just an exercise, um, a basic exercise in paper writing. And really, I'm looking at you to make a historical argument, uh, make an argument, and put it together through the paper. So that's the assignment that's due this week. We also have our discussion forum. Uh, this week, a a as usual. Um, the factoid for this week, uh, we are going to be, next week, we're going to watch a, a documentary film about the atomic age. World War II birthed the atomic age, nuclear bombs, ultimately, um, missiles, you know, nuclear, nuclear missiles from submarines, from silos, to bombers with atomic bombs or nuclear bombs, ultimately developed because of the technological advancements of World War II. Um, the United States first tested the atomic bomb. This is the factoid. The United States first tested the atomic bomb in New Mexico in July of 1945. This was the so-called Trinity test. And it was a culmination of the Manhattan Project, which was the project to build the atomic bomb. The United States then used the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 6th and August 9th, 1945. At the time of the bombing, it was basically accepted that, well, we're doing this because we have to end the war now and the Japanese just won't surrender. And while it may be the case that there were people in the Japanese leadership that you know, absolutely didn't want to surrender, uh, it was nonetheless the case that, um, uh, that there were leaders or, or members of the Japanese leadership that were actually making peace overtures. Um, uh, at the end of the war, and that many uh, officials in the Truman administration actually acknowledged that using the bomb was completely unnecessary, uh, that Japan had been completely defeated. 
And so why the ball was used was actually far more complex than just, um, than just uh, you know, we got to end the war quickly. It was more complex than that. It had to do with the terms that the United States wanted to end the war, the unconditional surrender terms. It had to do with trying to keep um, the Soviet Union out of Japan because they were mobilizing to become involved in a Japanese theater if we had a land invasion of Japan. Um, there's also uh, an aspect where the United States wanted to test the bomb out. So the usage of the atomic bomb, the fact was, the usage of the atomic bomb is actually um, today for historians a more complex and potentially controversial subject uh, than it was in, say, the late 40s, 50s, and, and 60s for, for, for those in the United States. All right, guys, let's have a great week. Let me know if you have any questions. Watch the presentations. Definitely watch the presentation on paper writing so you get the papers right. Um, okay, let's have a great week, guys.